webinar, please just type them into uh, the text box there on the right-hand side. Um, you guys are all on the uh, silent mode, so the only way we can communicate is through the um, text box. So, you know, to begin, I just kind of want to give an overview. Uh, the webinar is uh, really the year of the fickle customer. And what we found, and I'm going to talk about the industry uh, a little bit to start, is the automotive uh, industry, really the aftermarket industry, um, doesn't produce, um, you know, the same volume of customers as, say, uh, retail every year. Um, but the value of those customers um, is uh, significant. Uh, the lifetime value of an aftermarket customer extends past a decade. Now, the challenge is that most customers uh, are, uh, have pre-existing uh, uh, channels or ways in which uh, they do business. Um, and now more and more options are becoming available to them. So it's really commoditizing this product. Um, so we have eBay. Uh, we have Amazon, and then we have the incumbents, the, the big companies out there. <clears throat> so uh, for kind of the mid-market um, and the niche companies, uh, we really have to uh, strategize uh, on what we can do um, to capture a customer base and then to cultivate that customer base into a community. And where does that, where does that start? So our agenda today, we're going to talk uh, first really about uh, driving traffic to your site. We're going to talk about... Um, your brand image, um, creating credibility. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is really bringing visitors uh, back to your site and the difference between a visitor uh, and a customer, um, and then also how to create kind of a community uh, uh, around your customer and um, create really a customer loyalty program that the enterprise level um, and really the, the big e-commerce sites are doing very, very well right now. So we'll start with talking about driving traffic uh, to your site. Um, one of the keys here, and it's just really kind of a basic tip, is to focus on long tail keywords. Um, there is this fallacy out there that if uh, a lot of people are searching uh, for a word, uh, that, that's very powerful. So for example, if you were to say uh, there's you know, 50 million people searching for running and 50 million people searching for shoes, these are keywords that I should compete for. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that those words are really owned and dominated by uh, global companies. Uh, for example, Nike uh, and Adidas. So they really own those words just based off of the size and the reach of their brand. So we would be more su successful creating kind of a long tail keyword. So in combining that word uh, with other things that are relevant to our site and really even getting down to being geo-specific, highly targeted. That way we are not competing with uh, the larger brands um, and really going after uh, our ideal customer. The, the tone of this, and, and a lot of what we're going to talk about, is really this ideal customer, understanding who your buyer is, um, and targeting what we do for your buyer. So we're no longer targeting for uh, the Internet or aftermarket uh, uh, as a whole. We're targeting for the certain buyer uh, uh, that responds uh, to you. So the first place that they land um, is your website. So there's some really really, really kind of interesting statistics when it comes to uh, uh, your website and load time. I think uh, a great place to start is um, really the fact that if people are dissatisfied uh, with your website, uh, there's a 79% chance that they're not going to uh, repeat uh, uh, shop on your website. So 79% chance that you're going to lose a second sale. And we'll talk about the value of a second uh, uh, a little bit later in this uh, webinar, um, but that is that bridge from creating, uh, 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 you know, a one-time customer to a lifetime customer. Uh, the second fact that I find interesting is that how things spread on the internet kind of organically um, and, and virally. Um, so does uh, the experience on your site. So people talk about good experiences just as well as people talk about bad experiences. So Word of mouth um, plays a huge part in what we're doing.
um, and they're offering me an experience that I want to uh, repeat over and over and over again. <clears throat> so I, I think it is uh, uh, huge uh, that we, we kind of take a step back and say, okay, what are we talking about here, right? Because everything is, is in order. We're talking about a, a, a quick load time, right? And then we're talking about when they get there, right, creating this look, this feel that's going to uh, retain them and have them begin to engage you. So next we're going to start kind of getting into um, bringing visitors back to your site. So people have come to your site. They have left your site. I, th I think we all have the, uh, I've seen the challenge. I, I go into Google Analytics and I take a look and I had, uh, you know, 7,000 uh, unique visitors uh, uh, last month, but of those 7,000 unique visitors, why do I have a 2% uh, conversion rate? So I think some things that we can do um, from the beginning is update your information regularly, right? And what I mean by that is your calls to action, update your sales, update your homepage banners to be very, very topical so that when somebody returns to your website, they see that, you know, Right now, we're running this promotion. Or if I was at the SEMA show uh, uh, last week, uh, I, I have some material up there about that. Now, not only is this good for um, uh, the returning visitor to keep them engaged, to keep them coming back and seeing that it's fresh and new, it's also good uh, for the search engines because we're constantly updating. We're constantly informing uh, the consumer, the end user. One of the things we want to take a look at uh, as well is, is your blog and the material you're blogging about. This is something that needs to be uh, constantly visited. Now, if you're going to write a blog article about uh, a product, you're going to have to check the response about that because potentially uh, your clients aren't going to uh, respond well uh, to that. They might respond well to more lifestyle blogs. Uh, so the key is we have to put this content out there. We have to see how not only the visitors uh, are responding to the content, are we driving more people back because we, we put this content out there, and how are our customers responding uh, to this content. Another great tactic is to hold a contest. So for example, when we were down uh, in uh, the, the SEMA show, we held this Vegas off-road experience where we gave away a uh, four-hour uh, off-roading experience in the desert and then uh, I think it was 10 laps around a, a short track. Uh, what we saw from that is we had a huge response of people uh, uh, that filled out uh, information, wanted to participate in this, uh, that we held and captured people's attention uh, uh, at the time that we were announcing uh, who won the contest, uh, we have one really happy person who won the contest, of course, but we got to have a lot of great discussions, um, and we got to really bucket uh, about 40 people that are our are, are core, uh, that, that we can really help and have great conversations just based off of uh, really putting this contest out there and engaging people. It has to be uh, industry specific, right? You have to have this contest has to really make your base, you have to understand how your base is going to respond to it, and this is something that they want to respond to. For example, we chose uh, the off-road experience at the SEMA show because it seems a whole lot more uh, applicable uh, than, for, uh, for example, an iPad giveaway. <clears throat> so one of the other things that we want to focus on, like I was talking about before, when it comes to kind of updating your site, uh, making sure you have fresh content up there, you want to run short-term specials. Right, time-sensitive sales. Buy this now. You have 12 hours to purchase this product. We want to really tap into that scarcity uh, uh, mentality, um, and we want these sales and we want these promotions to be very custom and very specific. For example, if we have uh, uh, information about our client base, right? We should have. Um, uh, we should all be doing email campaigns, and, and if not, I'll talk to you about. Uh, the importance of that after after this webinar, right? But we should have uh, some some information on the demographic of our client. We should even have year make model information. So imagine if you ran a year make model specific sale at F150 owners, uh, offering 20% off of this special product for a short period of time. Your conversion rate for a type of sale like that uh, is going to be huge. I mean, you're looking probably at a 30 to 40 percent conversion rate if you plan and strategize how you're doing these things. If you broadly say, "Look, we're doing a, uh, a short-term sale on these products for uh, you know the next three days," yes, you're absolutely going to get a response, but not as much of a response if you understand your customer and target specific customer groups 
with these short-term short term specials. And that really just feeds into understanding your customer. You have to know your customer. So from the home page, we want to guide that customer. We want to really bucket our customers into four categories. These are the four profiles or the four people that are purchasing products from my website. And this is how uh, uh, they're responding. We want to turn this information around and target it towards our visitors, right? Because we've identified who our ideal customer is, uh, and we want to attract uh, uh, from the internet more ideal customers through our visitors. So how do we bring customers back to our site? So we have customers, uh, they've purchased a product here, they've purchased a product there. How do we keep engaging them? How do we build this, this loyalty? So I think a great company to look at here is in the retail space. It's a company called Zappos. I don't know if any of you uh, uh, have uh, gone on Zappos before, but if you do, if you haven't, I encourage you just from a research standpoint to go create an account on Zappos and see how they target you. Every time that you land on Zappos, uh, website, they're going to call you by first name. They're going to say, welcome, Matthew. Welcome back, right? There's going to be that personal greeting. Now I feel a part of, right? Um, these types of tactics work. That's why companies like uh, Zappos use them. So when it comes to your customers, we need to get as much information from your customer as possible. And I'm going to talk really quick about that first exchange that we were talking about before. So when somebody comes to your website as a new customer, you have to do whatever is possible. If you have to give up 15% of your margin to get that person to create an account on your website, to give you that demographic information that you need so that you can start to deploy some of these tactics, the value of that um, pays off in the long term. Because now what you have is you have a lifetime customer that you can target to directly that doesn't mind receiving uh, any of these things that we're going to be talking about here because they feel they have a level of buy-in they feel a part of. So the first thing we're going to talk about is newsletters uh, and emails. So people want to hear about how you're doing, right? They want to hear about um, uh, uh, what's going on uh, and you know where you're at uh, as a company and, and your thoughts on the marketplace, right? So you can really get in there and offer them in really a short type form or using links, uh, uh, some real topical information, and then watch what links they click and track that back, right? But you constantly want to get those newsletters out there, uh, at least monthly, um, and you want to keep them short, you want to keep them topical, and you want to give them the option to do more research. You want to give them links to click on so they can, if they feel like uh, they want to learn more, there's a place for them to learn more about what you're talking about. You don't want them to feel overwhelmed uh, with information because they'll continue to open that newsletter if they see value in it. The next one is this personal birthday message. Right? If we can get that information from your customer, and if we can get that from them on that first exchange, if we can say, hey, look, you know, uh, the first time you buy a product from us, we're, we're going to give you a 20% coupon. All you have to do is fill this out. And if we can get that information, right, now you're getting that buy-in on uh, another level when their birthday comes around. It seems uh, a little uh, uh, corny, uh, but it works. I mean, what we're looking for is we're looking to create that personal experience. What we're looking for is to pull people away uh, from the bigger channels and have them rally around your website, that they have some level of buy-in, that I feel connected. Because at the end of the day, what we're talking about is we're talking about the difference of $7. $7 a product. That's the difference between the product on your website and the product on eBay. And if a birthday message can get me to jump over that $7 hurdle, then it's a win. And companies have figured out that it can. Now, one of the things that we can do as well is we can incentivize uh, 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 reviewing items. We can get people to really start participating and saying, hey, look, here's a form for you to talk about uh, uh, this product, right? Um, and it has to be done in a way that they feel like they're being empowered. It can't be, hey, look, here is a, a, a generic email uh, with no level of personalization. Uh, please review this product. Nobody's going to do it, right? But if you let them know that they're important, their opinion's important, right, and that they have some say in what products you sell from this day forward, a certain amount of your customers are going to respond well, right? Um, and not, now, the search engines are looking for that. They're looking for third-party validation. So there's no better third-party validation than a customer of yours coming back and saying, I endorse this product, I endorse this service because...
The next thing we want to talk about is the cross-sell feature or recommended items. Uh, so now that we understand uh, uh, who our customer is, now that we understand uh, what products uh, uh, they're purchasing, how can we customize uh, uh, this related product seal? And how can we use this um, uh, to really increase our, not only our average sales price, uh, but also uh, uh, our level of service to our customer, right? So we have things like product bundles and kits where we can put products uh, uh, together. But the related products field is very powerful. And you have to go and spend the time and look at it product by product to say, hey, look, how are these products associated and how does this drive my ASP? How do I bring value to the customer here? So as a customer, um, when I land uh, on my product and I look down and I see a recommendation uh, uh, that fits, that makes sense, something I didn't think about, again, now you are more of a trusted uh, source uh, in my mind. And that kind of leads us into uh, customer loyalty. And I mean, I, I think it all starts with everything that we talked about really starts with a compelling web design, right? Uh, that from having a website that uh, loads quickly, right, that is SEO friendly, uh, that has best practices as far as uh, uh, the look, the feel, uh, the search, right? Um, and then driving people uh, into our website, uh, rewarding that behavior, identifying, creating this personalization, uh, uh, talking to your customer on multiple levels, right? And really starting to build a bond uh, where there's now, now what we're putting in place here is we're putting in place a switching cost. And you have to think about uh, uh, the new customer that you're bringing to the table, uh, that there's going to be a switching cost uh, for them to come to you. Uh, and, uh, you know, we want to put a strong switching cost in place so your customers don't leave you, right? So that they say, look, I know I could get this product cheaper on eBay, or I know I could get this uh, off this forum over here, but, you know, I don't want to switch. It's very similar to uh, uh, your relationship with your cell phone company, right? Every day uh, there's a new cell phone plan that's just a little bit cheaper, but I'm not willing uh, uh, to take the risk because I have a relationship now uh, uh, that I'm just going to stick with. So we have to start thinking that way. One of the community tools that we have in place and that we've done webinars on in the past, and I, I think that you need to just think about uh, uh, you know, this aspect of your business is a, a reader's rights. It's really a community, a community tool. So it allows people to go in and put their vehicle uh, up, pictures of their vehicle, a description about their vehicle, their year make model information. It allows them to pull parts from your catalog um, and talk about the work that they've done on their vehicle. It allows them to add products uh, to your wish list um, so that, uh, you know, as, as the business owner, now you know the products that they need. Uh, uh, and if you start marketing to them, uh, fantastic. And it also allows them to push uh, uh, their vehicle out to the social channels. So now your brand um, is introduced to their 500 friends on Facebook. So that um, is the uh, last uh, section. And now we're going to go into uh, uh, the Q&A here, uh, guys. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and um, uh, start uh, typing them in. So the question I have is, what is an effective way to climb Google search results? Well, I, so I, I think everybody wants the, the magic answer to that question. How do I get to the first page of Google, right? Or how do I, how do I get to the first page of Google uh, organically? Um, and the fact of the matter uh, is uh, it's probably not realistic. Uh, uh, if you compete uh, directly head-to-head -head, um, with uh, uh, the Ebays um, and the big players in the world. So what we have to do is we have to kind of create a strategy there. Um, and that strategy is really a combination of, uh, A, first and foremost, time. Uh, it takes time uh, for your site to index and for your time uh, for your site to uh, uh, kind of mature in the eyes of the uh, uh, search engine. Uh, but it's really a combination of uh, product reviews, like we talked about, uh, the layout of your site, uh, your blog, uh, you know, all your social channels, and how much third-party validation do you get? You know, how many people are engaging your site? Uh, the reason eBay uh, ranks so much is because you have all these people validating 
uh, that it works for them. So we need uh, to really create these relationships and to have people uh, validating your services the same way, and that takes time. And it takes really a, a strategy uh, that we laid out in this webinar, just a portion of it. Uh, you really have to get a, a lot more a granular, granular than that. Um, and I would gladly um, have that conversation uh, with any of you as well. My information is up here, so shoot me an email. So I have a question about uh, reader's rides um, and how to find out uh, more about it. I'll talk a little bit more um, about it. Um, and if you go to our uh, uh, website, if you actually if you just email me, I, I can send you um, uh, a bunch of, uh, of kind of the white paper about it and actually give you a demo of it um, as well. Um, so reader's rides is really uh, a user-generated uh, platform. So we created it. Um, to really bring that, not only that, that extra SEO value to the table, but that community as well. It works best in uh, enthusiast marketplaces, and it takes um, uh, time to grow. So it's not something that if you were to put on your website and say, hey, look, I have readers' rights, people are going to just start filling out accounts. It's something that you have to incentivize that behavior. You, you have to gamify it a little bit. You have to say, uh, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to do this or reward you with this if you fill it out. And what we found is once you have your first 30, your 40 accounts, that it really starts to take off organically at this point. People start to see all the vehicles that are listed there, and they say, hey, look, I want to, right? I want to list there, right? And I want uh, uh, to earn what these people earn. Um, and so it, 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 it's kind of like a snow, pushing a snowball down a hill. It takes some, takes some work to pack the snowball in the beginning. Um, and then once it starts moving, it just takes off organically. The person that we created Reader's Rides, uh, our beta version on, we created it about three years ago. Uh, the first version of it, they have uh, over 18,000 uh, user accounts uh, uh, generated. So you can just kind of see uh, the power of that. So I want to um, thank you guys for your time. Um, I'm going to send out an email uh, with my information uh, so you can kind of reach out and, and ask me questions as they come up. Um, and, and I hope what we presented was uh, informative.